Hi, my name is Varalika Mahajan, and I'm currently pursuing my master's in data science in Columbia University in the city of New York. I'm also working as a graduate assistant with Northeast Big Data Innovation Hub. So today we are going to talk about introduction to data science. What is the field of data science? What are the various contents or contents that have been created? What is data fairness? What is data privacy and data ethics? So to begin with, what is data science? As data science has its impact in so many domains and the efforts have been carried on by people in many disciplines, they have different understanding and perspective of what data science is. Here, we are trying to use the most common and widely accepted definition of it, which is in the form of a Wikipedia page. So as you can see over here, data science is an interdisciplinary field that uses scientific methods, processes, algorithms, and systems to extract knowledge and insight from structured and unstructured data and apply knowledge and actionable insights from data across a broad range of applications. So today we are going to understand with the help of various examples, what exactly is data science, what is the process that is used in it, and how do we apply it in our day-to-day -day life. So this is a very famous OSEMN process. Now, what does it exactly say? So first step is obtain. A scalable way to collect data is very important, such as SQL, web scraping, and scripting using Python or shell scripts are the most accessible and generalized way people generally get data in a scalable way. The second step to this is scrub. So the data you're getting could be messy, such as it could have meaning, uh, missing values, corrupted data, or inconsistency. If the data is unfiltered and unrelevant, the result will not be meaningful as well. So data scrubbing is very important. The third step which comes in data science is explore. Exploratory data analysis is very important to figure out what is what are the various trends in data, what does the uh, data look like, what are the various columns that can be used, what are the different correlations that can be formed. So once the data is ready, before jumping into AI or machine learning, you will need to first explore the data to get to know the data in general. Then the third step is modeling. To generate uh, models to predict or make decisions, this is the part where the real magic happens. The findings of using those models go, uh, go by the procedure and see what different insights can be gathered from the data, what are the predictions that can be made. That is a, a part of modeling. Then thirdly and lastly is uh, interpreting. So interpreting is basically storytelling to generate models for predictions or making decisions after that to interpret the data models and discover knowledge and make them useful for achieving business goals. That is generating data products. What are the final insights you can gather and presenting the data analysis that was conducted is the last step, which is interpretation. Now, when you see the diagram on the screen, you see data science is a combination of various fields that includes, uh, you can see the primary colors over here, computer science, maths and statistics, domain knowledge, all of these combined here make data science. Now, why do we say that? Coding or hacking skills could help gather and prepare data as well as automate the process of data science, uh, the OSEMN process that we start, uh, looked at in the last slide. Then maths and statistics focuses on understanding the patterns in the data and learning the algorithms for generating data models. This comes under maths and statistics. Machine learning, which is the modeling part of the data, the overlap between computer science and maths and statistics, it is about coding and statistics with domain knowledge acts like a black box where you know you throw the data without knowing what it means and get back some patterns. This is machine learning. Then, then we have over here the overlap between math and statistics and domain knowledge, which is empirical research. The overlap between the math domain without coding. Here the data is usually small scaled and unstructured. It focuses on designing the statistical models and interpretation of the results. Then lastly, a combination of all of this is data science, which is computer science, math, and domain knowledge as it analyzes the data in certain domain and generates models that can benefit the decision of in that domain. Okay, so moving forward, what is data science and why do we need to do it? The second question, which is why? Uh, so data refers to collection of facts such as some readings, 
of let's say let's take an example some readings of temperature like 30 or categorical values such as boy and girl and so on once the data is assigned with meaning it becomes informational for example these numbers represent temperature readings in uh, Rochester during November 2008 over here you can see information can be directly obtained from the data Knowledge goes beyond the information, but more like the interpretation of information, such as it's reasonable to wear a coat instead of short sleeves in Rochester during November. So this is an interpretation we gathered with the uh, temperatures we have over here. So data science is basically um, a mechanism to turn data into information and onwards up this pyramid to generating knowledge, to getting insights, which is called data products. Okay, now uh, very important and day-to-day -day examples which anyone can relate to. We're going to go through some data products. So the first we have where is Netflix. I'm sure everyone here has used Netflix. Netflix began using analytical tools in 2000 to recommend videos for users to rent. Netflix over 7K has over 7K TV shows and movies. With this number, it is actually impossible to for a viewer to find movies they like to watch on their own. So nine, uh, Netflix has a 90 second window to help viewers find a movie or a TV show before they leave the platform and visit some other providers because of how patient a normal average user is. That's when the major reasons why Netflix is so obsessed with data analytics and their personalization recommendation algorithm to hook users. So Netflix has one of the best personalized recommendation algorithms which produces about one billion dollar a year value for their customer retention uh, each year it is the main reason that the customers stay with netflix majority of netflix users consider recommendations with 80 percent of netflix views coming from the services recommendation meaning that the recommendations have a 80 to 90 percent accuracy of predicting user preference so when you think about Netflix, we always think it's a media-based company, but Netflix is one of the highest data analytics-driven company with the best algorithm they've got. Okay, so let's go through another example. Another commonly used website app which we use in our day-to-day -day lives is Amazon.com or Amazon. Amazon uses data science techniques to make personalized recommendations for our shopping too. The classic recommendation algorithm called item-based collaborative filtering was used about two decades ago. Once the user logs into Amazon, they have their own personalized homepage. The content of a home cage is determined by the shopping patterns the user interests in their previous purchase history, which are stored in Amazon databases. About 30% of the Amazon revenue is generated by its recommendation engine, which is again a very good accuracy in this field. Amazon provides both on-site, where appears on its website, and off-site recommendations such as through emails, WhatsApp, and more. The recommendation is not only based on users' data, but such as uh, browsing history, purchase history, but data from other users as well. So they find similar patterns in different consumers and try to recommend similar products. The intuition here is that the customers that have similar preferences or tastes or requirements tend to have sh uh, similar shopping style. So Amazon recommends those per uh, similar products purchased by those similar users to other users as well. Okay, uh, so let's go through another example. Google. Google uh, was uh, started by inventing the page rank algorithm. So basically, when you do a Google search, it ranks websites such as how much a website is reputable, how much is it trustable, only the links between website, not the contents of the website. The information collected here is topologically of the entire website graph where the nodes and the websites are uh, where the nodes are the websites and the edges are their links. For example, if a website such as B over here provides a hyperlink to another website such as C, a link formed from B to C. The intuition here is that uh, if B links to C, it kind of suggests that B trusts C to some degree. So the importance of B can be propagated to C. So using such links, the page ranking algorithm uh, of Google helps us find the best search results in a shorter period of time. 
Okay. Now sports, if you talk about sports, data science has played more and more important roles in sports. The news is about a data scientist, as you can see, uh, see over here. Laurie Shaw becomes one of the most high profile signings as he joined Manchester City. His expertise can be uh, can be to use data science to analyze millions of stats about player performances, uh, oppositions, ball related data to make decisions such as better manage uh, player fatigue, injury, illness, recruiting new players or coaches. There are many companies jumping into sports analytics business as data science can have a huge scope here, which is yet to be explored to its full intent. Okay, so to go through another example, uh, we have health and fitness data. Data science can help turn health-related data into something so useful for our health. The smart wearables, which are popular these days, such as smart helmet, glasses, headphones, footwear, watches, and so much more. In some cases, people can impact smart devices on their body. Wearables can collect um, so much data, such as the steps we have taken in a day, the food and water we have consumed, the calories we have burned, what was our sleep cycle like, what was our sleep movement like, and even breathing. And those devices generate massive data in such high speeds. The data can be used to come up with personal workout plan, making health suggestions, improving sleeping patterns, recommend health products, and so much more. Okay, so here are a few other examples that we can go through. Uh, we can analyze transaction data to detect credit card fraud, or we can analyze email data to identify spams. We can analyze image data to identify the people in the picture, or we can analyze user reviews to perform sentiment analysis. In all of these examples, data are collected and analyzed to generate valuable knowledge as data products. So these were some uh, applications. Now we're gonna talk about data science versus other fields. For example, big data. What is the difference? What are the similarities? Big data focuses on the big issues, which is like how efficiently to use data. When people use this term, they usually refer to the five V challenges, including volume, meaning the massive size of data, velocity, meaning the data can be generated in a high speed, Thirdly, variety, meaning that the uh, data can have various formats such as structured, textual, image data, media data, and so on. Veracity is about the quality of data or whether the data source is trustable or not. And the last V, which is value, which refers to usefulness of the result of analyzing the data. And then what is data science? What is the difference? So data science primarily focuses on turning data into knowledge or data products, as we just covered. It covers all the steps related to data in terms of collecting it, handling it, analyzing it. It may not always have big data issues. For example, you can perform an analysis in a small scale data set, but we will see it, uh, it is more and more common that people analyze large scale data and deal with big data issues in real life in a data science task. Okay, data science versus machine learning. Well, these two kind of go hand in hand. So data science covers machine learning, but also covers domain knowledge. Machine learning is frequently mentioned together with data science as a means to analyze data and generate productive models. Machine learning focuses on mathematical, computational, and technical part of data science, while data science is interdisciplinary, where domain knowledge also plays an important role. Okay, data science versus databases. Now again, these two also are uh, go hand in hand. If there is no database, there is no place to store the data, then there is no data science. Databases focus on managing data while data science focuses on analyzing data. They deal with different types of data and provide different supports. A data science task may deal with a larger scale of data than a database deals with. A database typically stores the data within an organization but a data science task may analyze data collected from multiple organizations. Databases usually deal with structured data and use the same schema to organize the data. Whereas data in data science can be unstructured. It can be in various formats. It needs to be structured to gain an analysis or insights from it. 
Databases have high requirement on data integrity as it serves the purpose of storing and querying. So it needs to ensure the quality of querying result and it usually has low tolerance and data inconsistency. A data science task does not care about data integrity that much. Obviously it does, but not to the extent we need to do it in a database. It allows inconsistency of data, but treat that as noises. It aims to find patterns or relations between data to the most of the records agree and tries to ignore the outliers. Okay, so overhead, as you see, data is the new oil. This was a term coined in 2006 by Clive Hubby, a British commercialization entrepreneur. The phrase suggests that just like crude oil, data is valuable. Without being refined, it cannot be used. Like how the oil needs to be changed into gas and other valuable materials, data needs to be processed and analyzed to generate valuable knowledge or insights, which can further help in making the right business decisions for any organization or product. Okay, so lastly, we're going to talk about data fairness, privacy, and ethics. So data ethics are considered as a crucial skill for data scientists due to the fact that data science is widely and frequently used in our lives. Data has been extensively collected and used to make decisions that will affect our lives. There are so many ethical issues that we need to address when we are dealing with data. For example, when data is collected and used, there is sensitive and personal information that needs to be protected to ensure every person's, every user's privacy. One of the power of using machine learning algorithm is the reduction of human involvement. It, but it may also cause a situation where fairness is violated and there is a bias generated in the models. So to understand all of these, all three of them need to go hand in hand. With or without being aware, a large amount of data is consistently correct, uh, collected in our daily lives. That raised the question of how to protect privacy. Two types of scenario where it fails to prevent, uh, protect our privacy is one is authorized use of data. That is, personal data is used without getting consent first. The consent covers not only whether the data can be used, but also how it is used. Another one is data breach that is intentional or unintentional release of personal information to an untrusted party. Sometimes we do not even realize what terms and conditions we are ex uh, accepting on different web pages, what are the data uh, we are allowing the uh, website owner or the party to uh, store on our behalf. To provide privacy protections, privacy by design principles require that data privacy requirements need to be incorporated into the whole engineering process, including product design, development, and delivery. This applies to any data product, as well uh, all the products generated from data science processes need to follow proactively the privacy protection during its engineering process. This has become a need because all the analytics driven firms are collecting data and they follow uh, this principle of privacy protection very thoroughly. Now, lastly, what is data fairness? Data fairness aims to generate unbiased data products. Machine learning models aim to find patterns coll uh, from collected data. If there is any bias existed in the data, such as Bias of serious types can be reinforced during the learning process and generate bias models. If we know how machine learning tools interfere where, uh, where such bias is generated, that might be helpful to avoiding the situation. But unfortunately, machine learning tools work as a black box. It is hard for humans to interpret and determine how the output, uh, the, uh, how the input triggers the bias result and how to fix it. So the input of a machine learning model usually determines the output. If the input is biased, then it is likely the output is also biased. That is why um, exploratory data analysis comes in role so that we can understand the patterns in data beforehand before modeling it into our, our machine learning models and gathering insights. And if the output determines our decisions making in our real life, such as what job to recommend, it will further reinforce the related stereotype. To avoid such situations, we should always be aware the, of the data fairness issue. 
test that if the data that is being collected that is being used for the analysis and modeling is biased or not whether the project has enough diversity of opinions to get involved in data collection processing interpretation of the result and the entire project uh, of the entire project so three things that come very importantly in data science are data fairness data privacy and data ethics so this was just an overview of data science thank you so much